I am currently on day nine of the social distancing, but I asked people on Twitter if they wanted to see a really boring social distance vlog. If you want to see what I do in a day of social distancing, but I do want to give you a form of escapism because I know I gravitate towards YouTube. When I'm looking for something to distract me or if I'm looking for a brief break from reality. So I'm hoping that this reading vlog can offer you the same comfort. So I do want to talk about my current reads if you don't mind. I'm currently rereading two series that are giving me a lot of comfort because I want to read the next installation into the series, but before I can do that, I have to reread the series considering the fact that I don't remember a lot from the previous novels. So I am currently rereading the Infernal Devices trilogy. I am on Clockwork Angel, which is the first book, and I am on page 310. Hopefully I can finish it today. I don't know. My house is very Cuban and we're very loud at all times throughout the day. And considering the fact that we are all stuck indoors with each other, the volume just keeps ramping up as the days go on. So it's very hard to read in a very loud house. I could read in my room, but I don't really like staying in a room by myself because I'm an extrovert. So I really like being surrounded by people. So I don't know if I'm going to be able to finish this today, but one can hope. And then I'm also rereading on audiobook Before the Devil Breaks You. I'm 13 hours in and I have eight hours left. Before the Devil Breaks You is the third book in the, the Diviners series and the last book just recently came out but I wanted to reread the series on audiobook before I got to King of Crows which I'm going to be reading physically because I can't seem to find the audiobook anywhere. I don't know if they released it yet. So I'm almost done with that. It's due in six days to Libby so hopefully I can finish that and just like listen to a bunch of it while I'm working now or while I'm painting my nails. And today I had my mom cut my hair because I was absolutely sick of my hair and my best way of coping with my anxiety and my worries is to change my appearance. And the best way I can do that is by cutting my hair. So I had her cut off like a couple of inches and I really like the length. You're probably looking at my hair and you're probably like, it looks exactly the same. That's also because I pre-film a lot of videos. So like my hair drastically changes in different videos. But this is the current length. I've had this length before. I just wanted to go back to it and it feels like home and it makes me feel really confident. So that is something drastic that I've done on day nine. What will Olivia do on day 20 or day 30? Who knows? The possibilities are endless. I also want to say that I added a little philodendron on the top of my bookshelf. And it just really brightens the room and makes me happy. And here we have the love of my life, my little snake plant, named it Scorpius Malfoy because I'm in my cursed child feels. You love him. I want to talk about some of the books that I got in the mail recently. So I got all of these before the social distancing thing happened. I think I got them all mostly in February or the beginning of March. One just came recently because I wanted to read it while I'm social distancing. So I just want to show you some of the packages that I've gotten recently to thank the people who have sent them to me and to show you what I've recently gotten in the mail. The first package is from Canada and this package is from Haley who kindly gifted me her copy of an arc of Chain of Gold because she wanted to pass it along to someone and I was talking about how I wanted an arc really badly and she decided to mail me her arc and I am so grateful because I have been highly anticipating this book for years upon years and I am just so excited to dive into it so that's why I'm rereading the Infernal Devices. Then I got a package from Get Underlined right before everyone started working from home and they gifted me a copy of Rory Powers' new release that's coming out in July and it is Burn Our Bodies Down and she spoke about this briefly when I went to the Wilder Girls escape room event in New York City and I feel like the synopsis is pretty vague as well but it says a beautiful twisted story of female awakening and it just seems really cool. Rory Power is a really cool 
writer. She's not afraid to get into the gory side of storytelling. So hopefully this one is just as creepy as Wilder Girls. Then I got a package from Del Rey and I requested this arc because it's one of my most anticipated books of 2020, which I spoke about in my most anticipated reads of 2020. And it is Mexican Gothic by Silvia Moreno Garcia. And this is a 1950s gothic horror historical fiction novel set in Mexico. There's an actual synopsis for this book, but that tagline, that pitch just really sells me and it seems like the type of book that I don't want to know too much about so I could just dive in without knowing a lot and then I could be surprised at every twist and turn. So I am very excited to pick this up soon. Maybe while I'm social distancing, once I'm done rereading all of those series that I previously mentioned, maybe I'll pick this one up and then I could review it to give me something to do. Another book that I requested was from Sourcebooks and they provided me with a copy of Wayward Witch by Zorira Cordova and this is the third book in a trilogy centered around brujas living in Brooklyn and I don't know much about the third book and I don't really want to know a lot. That usually happens for me with books. I usually don't want to know too much of the synopsis. I want to be surprised. And a package that I got from Focus Features to celebrate the release of Emma which is actually going to be premiering at home so you can watch it at home because they took it out of theaters. So if you want to rent it at home you can but they sent me a box of goodies to celebrate the release of Emma which is an adaptation of Jane Austen's Emma and I want to show you what's in the box so they gave me a notebook that says handsome clever and rich and it is by paper source and I can never have too many notebooks so I'm always thankful for people for gifting me notebooks then we have this cute little origami for Emma and I don't want to unfold it because because once I unfold it, I feel like I can't fold it back. But it has cute little drawings of the characters from Emma, and it gives me some Midsummer vibes. Even though I haven't seen the movie, I'm very familiar with the aesthetic of Midsummer, so it just reminds me of that movie. And then we have a nice Tiffany colored tote bag that also says handsome, clever, and rich. And I like this one because it's like pretty wide instead of tall, so you could fit a lot of items and they won't all fall to the bottom of your tote bag which is usually what happens for me and then the last thing in the package that focus features provided to me is the screenplay of Emma and I think that is so cool because I only own one screenplay and it's the screenplay for The Dark Knight which is what my brother got me because that's my favorite movie of all time and I've always wanted to collect more screenplays but I'm not really sure as to where I can obtain them so I'm really excited to one see the movie Emma because I've heard really good things about it and then read the screenplay so I can just like learn more about how people compose screenplays and the structure of it and the detail that goes into it so I'm very excited to read this eventually maybe it'll be part of my hashtag let's read plays on Instagram where I read one play every single month which I decided to do randomly this year so maybe I'll read this one for April I don't know. And the last package that I have is from Amazon. I got a book randomly last week. I ordered it because I wanted this book if I was going to be social distancing and I really wanted it. I was looking for it all over in different bookstores in New York City and Barnes and Nobles everywhere and they never seemed to have it so I just decided to order it on Amazon because that seemed like the only place where they have it available. So I got myself a copy of Before the Coffee Gets Cold and this is a book that I've heard a lot about on YouTube and on Instagram. It's basically about a time traveling cafe where when you order a cup of coffee you're able to go back in time to any single time period but the catch is you have to return back to the cafe, back to the present time, once your coffee turns cold. And I have previously said, I think in my favorite reads of 2019 video, that I want to get more into Japanese fiction because I read The Memory Police, I really enjoyed the writing style. So I wanted to branch out and get another Japanese fiction novel to try out, and I've heard a lot of good things about this. So hopefully this will broaden my horizons even more and maybe it'll get me even more interested in Japanese fiction. So if you have any recommendations, please let me know because I would love to pick up more Japanese fiction or any type of fiction 
in general. Like, if you have good book recommendations that seems right up my alley, if you know my reading style, then just like comment them down below. Just let me, let me have some book recommendations. I played Stardew Valley for two days straight. I mean, I did other things like watch Silence of the Lambs, which just ramped up my anxiety towards the general population, but I mostly played Stardew Valley because I got back into the game and once you get into that game, you can't stop playing. So I did not read for two days, but I'm hoping today that I could finish Clockwork Angel and Before the Devil Breaks You because I'm so close to finishing both of them, it's ridiculous that I haven't already. So rather than playing Stardew Valley, I'm going to finish those two books and then as a reward, once I finish those two books, I'm going to play Stardew Valley because now I got chickens in my chicken coop and now I can make more money on my farm and I am excited. And if you do not know, Stardew Valley is basically just like a farming game. You just farm, you make friends with people in the town, you get married, you just try and make as much money as possible. It's like Harvest Moon, but like with lower quality, but it's cute. It just looks all pixelated and like adorable. So while everyone else is playing Animal Crossing on their Switch, which I can't buy because I'm not spending $300 on a freaking console. I'm playing Stardew Valley on my laptop. So, if you have other cute games as well, like Stardew Valley or Animal Crossing-esque, please comment them down below because I need all the cute games in my life. I know Cooking Mama is coming out on the Switch and I'm just like, damn, all my favorite games are coming out on the Switch. I should probably get a Switch, but I will not. I will not spend $300 on a freaking console. I don't play video games that much to warrant me buying a Switch. It's 
I don't need it. I'm telling myself that every day. You don't need one. You don't, I don't need one. But I want one. But I don't need one. While I was sketching, I finished Before the Devil Breaks You because I was listening to it on audiobook and I want to show you my sketch because I've never done art digitally and I think it's coming out really cute. It's a little ghost drinking their morning coffee. Look how stinking cute. Let me zoom in so you can see the detail of the, of the wood and the table and the snake plant that I drew inspired by Scorpius. Oh, so cute. finally did it. I finished Clockwork Angel, my reread, and I finished my reread on the audiobook of Before the Devil Breaks You yesterday. So now I can continue on with these two series that I'm trying to get through for the comfort of it all because I love these two series so much. And then I can finally start King of Crows, which is the last book in the Diviners series. And I'm so excited to get to that one because I've heard literally nothing about the end of the series. Nobody has commented on it. Nobody said if it's good or if it's bad. So I'm very excited to go in to the last book in the series without knowing anything about it. So I hope you enjoyed this reading vlog. It's just a simple social distancing reading vlog where I just read a lot, tried new things, and there's a lot of musical montages because I'm in a house full of family members, so there's a lot of noise happening in the background that I didn't want you guys to hear. Let me know what you're currently reading. Let me know what you have been reading when you've been social distancing. I would love to know, and I hope you all stay safe, stay healthy, and remember Remember to check in on others as well, especially if you know people working in the healthcare field because they need all the support that they can get with their jobs. So I hope you have a wonderful day, happy reading, and if you enjoy this content and you haven't subscribed already, subscribe so you can see more videos from me in the future. Have a wonderful day. Bye!